Oh, my goodness, you're sleepy. Hey, y'all, it's that time again. It's time for Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. My name is Deborah, and I'm coming to you from here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks, where I like to do all the crafts. I knit, I crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I make jewelry, I do needlework, I sew my own clothes. Uh, I'll try any craft once and twice if I like it. Um, I am also a professor at a local university where I teach courses to physics majors. I teach service courses to our pre-med students and our general education students. And I am a docent at our planetarium. And I am a big proponent for um, things, for advocacy for women in STEM, for diversity and inclusion in STEM, and for uh, science literacy and uh, doing science outreach to the public. Um, I am also a farmer. I am a third generation family farmer here on 170 acres where my family has lived for over a century and I raise grass fed beef cattle. I raise horses. I have a flock of, of heritage poultry. I have show quality rabbits and I have a retirement herd of miniature horses, miniature donkeys, donkeys, a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules a roost and Princess Penny the potbelly pig. And as you can tell from my little co-host who I just woke up from his nap here, Willie. Oh, I am fur kid mom to several dogs and cats, including an out, outside clouder of barn cats of indeterminate number. <laughs> so if any of all of that sounds interesting to you, I hope you'll join me as we continue with this episode of Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. Okay, if you're looking for us on social media, you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Doc Firewoman. There is also a Facebook group for the podcast, Diary of, the Phys of a Physicist Farm Gal uh, podcast. There is a Ravelry group if you're on Ravelry, although it is not terribly active at the moment. And um, we also have a Zoom meetup where you can... Uh, hang out and do crafting and that's open frequently throughout the week. Uh, I do post special Zoom events from time to time and I'm going to probably start doing more of that as we get into summertime. Um, also, I am on Twitter, but I am a fairly socially liberal uh, left-leaning Democrat, so best not follow me on Twitter because if that kind of stuff bothers you because that's where I vent a lot of my views, of course, I do that kind of everywhere anymore because, you know, I am who I am. Uh, but most of y'all know that by now. Oh, goodness, Willie is asleep again. He's he's so sleepy. He's sleepy, sleepy. Um, and you can also, um, like I said, join us on Zoom. There is a Ko-fi for the podcast uh, where if you would like to help support the podcast in terms of supporting the Zoom room or... Uh, paying for postage or whatever. I am always grateful for that. But if not, that's okay too. I'm just glad that you're here. So we are working on getting to 500 subscribers. I'm going to do a, a giveaway at 500 subscribers, um, which I'll probably make a little video about at some point to show you what I'm intending on giving away. Um, but we did have a giveaway. And if you want to be eligible for my giveaways, you do need to be a subscriber to the channel. You do need to fill out my Google form. Uh, you do need to be 18 years or older. Uh, and this is not sponsored in any way by anybody but me. So, uh, and if your giveaway is lost, your prize is lost or stolen or whatever, it has no monetary value. So, you will not, it will not be replaced. But, Please fill out the Google form. I don't release that information to anyone unless, in the case of this week's prize, one of them needs your, the, the um, Sarah needs your email address to be able to send you your patterns. Uh, but I don't use it for anything other than just getting your prizes to you. So, this past time, we were giving away three patterns, three cross-stitch patterns. Two copies of the We Believe Sal and one copy of the Pro-Choice Sal from Notorious Needle, Sarah from Notorious Needle. The pro-choice sale has started. It's in its second week, um, but, you know, you can do it as you, you want to keep up or not. And then the We Believe sale is her sale from 2021, and this is for the large pattern. It is not for the smalls like what I'm doing. Those are separate uh, patterns now. That was just a bonus if you joined the sale last year while it was going on. But you will get the large pattern if you participate, if you win the prize. So we had uh, nine people who said they said the keyword believe and those 
the random number generator drew out Cheryl Jackson and Allison Pittman. Cheryl Jackson and Allison Pittman. So I will get your email address to Sarah so that she can get you your pattern this week. Then on the pro-choice sale, we had six people who were interested in joining the pro-choice sale and it drew out Patsy code. So Patsy, uh, I will get your email address to Sarah as well so that you can uh, get your uh, pattern. So um, everybody make sure you filled out the Google form so that, that I have the information that I need and then we'll get that information to Sarah and she'll get you the electronic uh, way to access your pattern. So yay, thank y'all. We've got some new viewers here, so I'm glad that y'all are here and welcome. So um, yeah, the usual chaos and mayhem here. So I've got two different prizes for this week. Uh, one is a fiber prize. This was donated to me to give away. Uh, it's got some, looks like Noro yarn up here. The tag is not on it, but it's this beautiful sort of silky, pale uh, rainbow yarn and to go with it this beautiful um angora uh, fiber mohair fiber here uh this is in sort of a green tone so this is 85 percent mohair hair mohair mohair <laughs> and 15 percent vinyan which i think is prob i don't know what vinyan is i'll have to look that up but anyway so um you get looks like four balls or three three balls of the green and one of the multicolored yarn. So if you want this prize, simply say yarn in your comment. So yarn for this one. Then the other one is a kit of uh, the Serenity Prayer. Those of y'all who are familiar with the Serenity Prayer, it is a stamped cross stitch. So it is a stamped piece of fabric that you do. And it is a complete kit, so far as I know, all the flosses, and it's never been opened, so all the flosses are there. So um, if you want to do the Serenity, if you would like a chance to win the Serenity Prayer, say stitch. So yarn and stitch, yarn, stitch, yarn, stitch. There you go, okay? And you can try to win both or either of them. I just, whoever random number generator draws out is who wins. So um, anyway, so that's our giveaways for this time. So now we're going to move on and talk about finished objects. Okay, so I've got Willie on my lap here and Fizzy is roaming around. So I'm sure you'll see her uh, in here from time to time. But I thought I would show you. I did finish some things this week. So I thought I would share those with you. Um, first of all, I finished my naturalist shawl. This is the naturalist by... CJ Brady. This has not been blocked yet, but it had, I did weave the ends in. So, um, this is the naturalist. It is a meant to be more or less a two skein sport weight shawl. I made this with lion brand jeans. So it's a little, I think that's a little heavier than a sport weight. It's in between like a sport and a DK, but I loved the color. I thought it was a beautiful color. This is the, um, top stitch colorway. So I need to wash this and block it. I'll probably do that this afternoon because it's a beautiful sunny day here. But I've got a meeting in just a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of, take care of that first, <laughs> get that out of the way first. So yeah, The Naturalist by C.J. Brady. So this is a little bit bigger than her normal one skein wonders, but it's a great way to use up those sport weight or maybe some leftover DK or sport weight yarn that you have. Also, I finished Muffin the Puffin. Yay, Muffin the Puffin. This is a pattern by Irene Strange. Uh, I started this, oh gosh, a while back. Um, back in 2020, actually, I started her. Um, and this is this is not a beginner amigurumi, I would say. But it is a very nicely written, well-written pattern. Uh, very straightforward and in its instructions and you can position her head different ways I just thought she looked cute kind of looking back over her shoulder here um, off in the distance at something so uh, muffin the puffin this is all done in just scrap yarn I can tell by the feel of this it's probably some older uh, red heart yarn and then these are some eyes that I got I think I got them in a box of set of eyes that I just bought a bunch of, you know, random eyes. Um, I don't remember where I got them. So I already had everything and I had the stuffing and everything. So this is Muffin the Puffin. This is a pattern 
by Irene Strange. And again, I wouldn't say it's a beginner, beginner amigurumi, but it really, the pattern is so well written. It's pretty straightforward to do. And I love how my amigurumis never turn out looking like the pictures, but that's okay. I make them my own and that's what's matter. What well, That's what matters. So, um, I also finished another section of the We Believe Stitch Along. I finished Healthcare as a Right. So I got that done and I'm working on another section now. I've decided just, I'm gonna finish this. I, I don't care what my Whip Go draws are. I'm gonna say something about Whip Go. And this has, I think Whip Go is a wonderful idea. And if all I had to do was follow the person who's in charge of it and see what happens, you know, that's, that's what I'm gonna do next year if I decide to do it. Because frankly, the people on that Facebook group, those are the most ungrateful people. <laughs> the, you know, they're all, they're grabbing. Why didn't you draw all the numbers at the beginning of the year? Well, then that's not how, then what's the point of having the month to month thing? And then why haven't you drawn the numbers yet? And it's like the 15th of the month. I mean, these people are some of the most ungrateful people I have ever met. Asking questions that have already been answered, being rude to the lady that hosts it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if she just said after this year, I'm not doing it again. Because what's in it for her? I mean, other than just a bunch of static that she's getting from people. And if you're one of those people, don't do that. Stop that. <laughs> Stop that. So, I, I'll do it again, but I'll probably choose to um, just, you know just follow her on Instagram and, and get out of that Facebook group. Because I tell you what, I can't look at that stuff. Sometimes it pops up on my feed. I try to unfollow it, but sometimes it pops up on my feed. It's always the people who are griping. I don't understand that. <laughs> anyway, those are my finished objects for this week. So let's go on and talk about works in progress. Okay, so I've got book group in just a little bit, but I think I can get through my works in progress before I have to go to book group. So uh, this is my bag that I'm carrying my We Believe sample or section in. I am working on the next piece, which is No Human is Illegal. This is by Notorious Needle. And um, I would have been done with this border, but I made a mistake and had to pull out all of this because I made a mistake down here and had this moved over too far. But my goal today is I'm gonna try to finish that border and start on um, the lettering. So No Human is Illegal is my next section. That leaves me, once I finish this, I have four left. So uh, I did a book review thing at work where I get a $100 Amazon gift card. So I'm gonna use that to buy my hoops and stuff to finish my mobile with, so. Yay. <laughs> okay, so another um, work in progress that I have is here in another one of Charlotte's bags. Uh, this is my Easy Raglan sweater, and I am almost done with the body. I was going to switch and do the sleeves, and I just got going on this body. And it, I'm not making it as long as the pattern calls for because I think that will be too long. But um, I'm already working on the bottom band of this. You do the same mock cable down here on the bottom that you do on the neck band. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish the body and then do my sleeves. So this fits really well. I'm really pleased with the fit on it. I got the fit. It's a little snugger than my flax, which is what I wanted. I wanted it to be a little bit more fitted. So this is the Easy Raglan uh, sweater. It's a pattern from Green Mountain Spinnery. And then it is knit in... Uh, this is Wool of the Andes Special Reserve uh, in a colorway called Sea Monster. I don't think you can get this color anymore, but you might be able to find it on a D-stash. So, yeah. So, I'm going to do that, and then I'll pick up for my sleeves. I'm going to knit my sleeves in the round. I don't see any point in knitting them. Actually, what they have you do is pick up, knit them flat on the sweater, then seam them. That seems like a lot of work to me. So, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So anyway, so I'm going to focus on getting that uh, finished if possible uh, before the next time we meet. I don't know if I will because those sleeves have probably got a lot more knitting in them than I'm thinking they do. But then I started something new. This is in my Women of Science bag that my friend Maria out in Colorado gave me when we did a swap one year at Christmas. My friend Sandy at work, she's a, a nursing instructor. She brought me, and she's also an avid gardener, she brought me a bunch of yarn. And what she brought me, there were two balls of this and three balls of this. This is Red Heart with Love or Red Heart Love. And it is, um, there, it's acrylic, but it's soft. 
and I like how it feels. And so I thought I'm going to knit a sweater out of that. And I wanted a color block sweater. So both Tyra and Jessica on my, um, on my podcast or on my Zoom group mentioned the Saturday morning sweater by Dragon Horde Yarns by Tristan from Dragon Horde Yarns. So uh, it is a color block sweater. There's a picture of it. So I've decided I'm going to knit that. Now what I'm doing is I decided to knit with the short row shaping so that it would be more of a scoop neck instead of a boat neck. So I have just finished my short row shaping and I'm back to working on my raglan increases. So, um, you know, there's the neck band there. And then I did the short row shaping. That's the back side. So this is the front side. But anyway, so, well, the back of the sweater. Here we go. <laughs> I'll get it here in a minute. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I'm going to knit that um, for myself just to wear. I like having a sweater to wear around the house as a comfy, comfy sweater. So I'm, I think this will be perfect for that. It's something I can throw in the washing machine if you get dog, dog and cat hair on it. Um, the, my progress keeper and my, my, uh, uh stitch markers are a gift, or a gift from Vanessa. It's a little, uh, Ouija board planchette and it says witching hour on it. So I thought that was perfect. So, uh, plus that also meets the yellow criteria for this month on um, Jessica's podcast. So, um, I've got one more work in progress. Let me reach over here and grab it because I didn't bring it with me. I have started my Mr. Domestic uh, Sunflower Pillow. He posted they've raised almost $50,000. His work matched $15,000, but he raised $35,000 selling this pattern. My gosh, y'all, that's amazing. Crafters are the best, aren't they? I, I know I was just gripping about the wake up people, but generally crafters are the best. So I've gotten uh, four petals done. This is out of the Bernat Blanket Yarn. This is not the school bus yellow color he used. This is sun soaked because the school bus yellow color was sold out. I need to buy the sepia color for the center, but you make 12 petals and then one center. And Nancy has made this and she said that she got all her petals out of a ball and a half and then the center took a half a ball. So I think I may order another one of these. Then I can make two pillows and give one away as a present if I want to. So, yay. So those are my works in progress. So um, I do have a couple of future crafting ideas that I'll share with you. Um, I don't really have any acquisitions this time. So we're going to move on, move on and do future crafting. Okay, so I have a couple of things that I'm going to show. First of all, I got a, a sunflower pattern, a sunflower hat pattern. And I'll put a picture in here if I remember. But my friends Marla and Gypsy brought me this yarn from Iceland several years ago. And I've been waiting for the right project to do with it. It just so happens this is exactly the right amount and the right weight of yarn to do that sunflower pattern. So I'm going to do this with that um, pattern. Then also... Um, Shirley was on the other night and we were talking about double knitting and I've been trying to learn Catherine from Neat and Not by the Sea was online and Shirley is the double knitting whiz. So she was asking her a lot of questions. I've had this pattern for a long time. I've tried it several times. This is double knitting and I think it'll be easy to start with. So I'm going to try this out. So um, those are my future plans. So we'll see how that works out. <laughs> I don't have any acquisitions. So we're going to go straight on and talk about science. Well, Willie's not going to be in the science segment today, but I decided to record it outside. My struggle bus has, has thrown a rod and is on the side of the road with steam coming out of the radiator. So, <laughs> I'm just, I was going to get up this morning and record and I just didn't have it. I've got a meeting in about 45 minutes that I have to be at and I'm just kind of checked out mentally today. I think, I don't know what's going on. Uh, but anyway, so school, we are, this is, tomorrow is my last day of class. Um, and then we have finals. We've got Girls of Power and STEM is Friday, which I'm excited. Grace is coming in for the uh, Sigma Pi Sigma induction on Saturday. And I looked at who was going to be there. Jeremy and Jared are both coming in too. So I'll get to see them and I'll try to take some video of everybody if I can. Um, but we had girl, we have Girls of Power and STEM on Friday, 
where we bring in uh, eighth grade girls or boys. I mean, anybody that wants to come can come. But we focus on women in science. And so I'm doing planetarium shows uh, for them. Then uh, we had the Pluto reacting game yesterday. Jessica got to come in and be a guest judge from Two Sticks and Strings. She got to come in and be a guest, uh, a guest well, not a judge, a guest voter, because we reenacted the IAU meeting where they voted on what the Pluto classification should be. And there were a lot of feelings <laughs> about, you know, Pluto getting changed, its classification changed. But, you know, to see kind of the process, and my students did a really great job reenacting the debate. And then we got to vote however we wanted to, and uh, I let I was going to be the tie-breaking vote because we had an even number of undecideds, and I ended up not having to be the tiebreaker. It was overwhelmingly, let's keep Pluto a planet. <laughs> so, unlike the actual vote. Um, so, we did that. I've been doing planetarium shows for school groups. That's been really fun. Um, had had lots of different groups coming in, and we've got STEM Day coming up after finals week. Plus, we're doing our big thing where we're doing lots of um, lots of school groups coming in in May. So we'll be doing quite a few planetarium shows then. Sigma Pi Sigma is induction is Saturday. That is a um, national organize honors organization for physics. And it's associated with the Society of Physics Students, so you can induct faculty or uh, alumni or whatever. So we have that coming up. Uh, so Grace is coming in for that, and like I mentioned already, Jeremy or JJ and Jared are coming in for that also. So I'm looking forward to getting to see them. I haven't seen them in a long time, so it'll be nice to see them. Um, yeah, so let's see what else is going on. Oh, we had our uh, service learning slash uh, Center for Teaching and Academic, Center for Excellence in Teaching and Academic Leadership Awards Banquet and Recognition, or not wasn't a banquet, but it was a reception. And um, I got my recognition track for doing, um, improving my online course and being involved in CETL activities. And they did a special award for me. I was really surprised. They started a thing called the CETL Insider of the Year. Because if you sign up to be an insider, that means you kind of get the first look at everything. And then you earn points for the things that you're involved in towards your recognition track. And Jessica, one of the instructional designers, said as she was doing up the points, you know, Deborah's gotten about a zillion points. We really should do something special. So they did this inaugural uh, Insider of the Year award. I was totally surprised. Nobody knew they were doing it. I was I was shocked and stunned and very deeply touched because I really enjoyed being involved with the CETL activities. I found a community there. I feel like I'm making a difference by being involved with that and bringing it back to my classroom and my department. So that feels really good. Um, so we are on, like I said, tomorrow is our last day of instruction. We've got uh, finals and one of my classes, they can opt out of the final if they're satisfied with their grade. Uh, one of the classes they can, um, the final is their presentation. And then one of the classes we're having a last discussion. So it should be a pretty good week of uh, activity. And I'm looking forward to... Um, being done, I'm going to be honest. I, of course, I start right back up with intercession. So, um, I start right back up with my May intercession class. So, I've got to finish making the changes to it that I wanted to make for uh, the accessibility stuff. But at least it's online and it's asynchronous. So, I just have to ch make sure I keep up with my email and get my online grading done. So, that's been good. Um you know, we are, we finished up our women's book group. We had a little lunch together. And then um, today is our last day of the Not Light But Fire book group, uh, which I've really gotten a lot out of. We did our last uh, building anti-racist white educators meetup. And there was a really good article in there about how to do diversity correctly and not do it in a way that centers white supremacy. <laughs> there was a, there was an article about, you know, desegregation forced students of color into white supremacist spaces. And if you do diversity and inclusion initiatives wrong, you can do the same thing. 
So you have to think about how you're enacting these initiatives, and it really hit home to me. I'm on the DBIE subcommittee for the Teaching Excellence Institute, um, and that's one of the things that we've been talking about. So that's been on my and on the forefront of my mind. But it's been good. Uh, it's been a good year. Um, I think everybody's just kind of tired and hitting the wall. Um, so yeah, but you know things are greening up. It's it's been an explosion of green in the last week or two. So uh, things are greening up, and it looks really great here. And um, yeah, so now we're going to move on and talk about farm life. And I recorded some more clips for you outside. Well, here's a quick farm update. Um, I've been cutting down these little waste trees that were here in my front garden bed. This stays because this is an elderberry. I need to clean my sign um, with a little bit of soap and water to get the algae stuff or the buildup of stuff off of it. But yeah, my elderberries are definitely happy here. So they're kind of crowding out the daylilies even if that's possible. So anyway, so yeah, got that done. Got more of the garden put in. I set out all my plants um, that I had. So I've still got to do, sow my seeds, but I'll get that done hopefully this week as things are starting to wind down in the semester. So things are looking pretty good here so far. Yeah, so this will be, like I said, the I put this up. This is gonna be the trellis for my Trombuccino squash and then these are two extra tomatillos that i picked up at the feed store because nobody was buying them so i'm like well i'll take them i tried to leave some behind for people but they didn't want them <laughs> the turkeys are doing well they seem to be happy so far need to get them a little bit of water it looks like move the chicks outside here so um they're in the old coop that i put the new roof on here so they seem to be pretty happy Zoe, who rides brown sugar, brought me some chicks that she'd raised. These are about a month older than the other ones. I've got them in my quarantine pen right now. Uh, they're just barnyard mix. Um, they're what are called Easter Eggers, which are a sort of a chicken that's a cross off of a, a Aracana or Americana, and they lay a blue egg. Let me see if I can get a better picture of it. So, hi guys. Yeah, so they're <laughs> they're like, what are you doing? Uh, but they're they're a mix, and they'll lay blue eggs most likely. So, yep, they're all ones that she raised. They're about a month older than my other ones, and I'm keeping them in quarantine right now to make sure I don't bring any illnesses into my flock. Quick container garden update: the leeks are starting to put on some height, so I guess that means they're happy. So now what I'll do is I'll fill in with some compost around them. And that'll make that white part longer. So lettuce is looking really good. Radishes are looking really good. These are my uh, Brussels sprouts. I've been watching this cabbage for any sign of cabbage loopers. Uh, I've been covering it up in the evening to try to kind of keep the cabbage looper moths off of it. So we'll see. And then broccoli looks happy. The mints are definitely happy. They're growing like crazy. Here, so that's good. So that's a little container garden update. Here's a little uh, fruit tree, quick fruit tree update. My nectarines are starting to grow. You can see them there. I need to spray them now to try to keep that black or that brown rot fungus off of them, but they grow so fast this time of year. So I just, I've got quite a few on there. So I need to spray some fungicide on it, but it's gonna rain today, so today would not be the day to do that. The last thing I'll share is this is a walnut that I sprouted from the black walnuts that I brought from my great aunt and uncle's place, and now here I've got another one. So I've got two walnut trees that I sprouted from the walnuts from their farm before it got sold. There's another little Carolina buckthorn in here. I actually need to move this and plant it. And also, this is one of the grape vines that I took cuttings off the wild grapes up in my pasture. And this is one of the grape vines that has grown from that. So, you know, not super awesome that I only got one for all the work that I did, but I'm still proud that I got one. Yay me. So yeah, I need to move this out because things don't like to grow around black walnut. So I don't want this little thing to die because it's in the same tub as this black walnut that's sprouting. 
So I will move that this week. The last thing that I'll share is my little woodland garden area. This is a, a buckeye, an Ohio buckeye. And then this are some trillium that I got from my friend Carol's place. They were getting ready to do some groundwork and these were growing. So I dug them up and moved them. And then this is a May apple that I also got from her place for the same reason. So yay, I'm really excited that those have come back. So I've gathered up some chickweed here to make some chickweed salve. I saw my friend Sasha yesterday and she was talking about some that she had made. So I've got this gathered up. I'm going to try the warm oil method on this batch where you let it wilt, but then you do it in warm oil and strain it so you get all the organic matter out of it so it doesn't mold. Up here, I've got some that I dried. So I'm going to try both methods on it and see uh, what I get. Okay, some other things that happened uh, during their kind of farm related. First of all, um, last Saturday, uh, me and my friend Lori from work went out to the park to one of Sasha's programs on a nature interaction, okay, on nature interaction. And we got to see, um, like, she showed us about different uh, types of um, species of bugs and birds and fish and uh, snakes and <sighs> fizzy and mammals and all different kinds of things like that. And we had a great time. Lori had a ball. And, and, and I think, I hope she'll come back to me with some of the other ones. But um, this is a little flip chart that she gave us. It's one of those little flip pocket guides that you can get. And it has, this is specifically for Arkansas wildlife. So it has fizzy different um, creatures in it that are native to Arkansas. So yeah, so there's some of our, our common butterflies and some other flying insects and then fish and snakes and amphibians. And then you've got different birds and mammals. So uh, that's meant to be a size that you can easily carry in a backpack. It's it's laminated, so it's nice and waterproof. So that was a nice, nice uh, present for doing the class. Also that afternoon, my friend Sonia brought her two daughters, Vivian and Olivia, out to the farm. Uh, they had been out here uh, right at the start of the pandemic, and they came back to visit. So they had a lot of fun meeting the animals and giving them treats and uh, getting to see everything. So I'll include a couple of pictures along the way of that. So, yeah. So now we're going to finish with a few final thoughts. Okay, so for my final thoughts today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've been listening to a podcast um, called the non-binary marriage and it's uh, if you're on tiktok you may know april a joy she um is big into uh deconstruct deconstructing um belief or faith deconstructing their belief uh both she and, and their spouse beecher um were huge in evangelical christian circles all through their growing up life through their mar beginning of their marriage and everything and they talk about their deconstruction of that, not their their faith in something bigger than us, because they both still identify as Christian, and they both are very active in their faith. But deconstructing all of these parameters that are used to divide and create hate uh, that have been put on by people, and um, you know, the uh, they the, she has a podcast about that, but what what caught, they're talking about their particular journey on their marriage, uh, because Beecher um, has come out as non-binary, and has been non-binary probably their entire life, but struggle with gender dysphoria, what they know now as gender dysphoria, and um, you know, thought for a while they were demonically possessed and so forth and so on, uh, and they talk about their journey from beginning to now where they are now and um i've really enjoyed listening to it but she really she made a point that really drew, hit home with me and that was she was talking about she has two younger twin brothers and this was a very actively evangelical family in the sense that her father was a missionary she worked um for the 700 club i mean very very ensconced in that way of thinking and she said one of the pivotal moments in her deconstruction was when her, she has two twin brothers and they're younger than her. And one of her brothers came out to her as homosexual, as gay. And he said, you know, I've prayed about this. I felt this way my entire life. I know this is who I am. This is how I was born. This is not a choice. This was a, this was how I was, this is who I am. 
And he said, I've prayed about it and I prayed about it. And I'm just telling you, this is who I am. And she said, in that moment, all that mattered to me was I loved my brother. And I realized that if my belief system, not her faith, not her personal connection to the beyond or the divine, put me on the wrong side of love. If my belief system put me on the wrong side of love, then I was doing something wrong in that belief system. There's something wrong with that system that man has put in place. If my belief put me on the wrong side of love, how much different would the world be if we all just took a pause, thought about these man-made structures that we have, then looked at each other as human beings, you and I, human beings on this little rock flying through space, the same, breathing the same oxygen, same kind of blood, same kind of bone, all just, you know, one foot in front of the other trying to get through our lives. And if we looked at, if we embraced our differences, our differences in who we love and how we look and how we cook and how we speak, how we dress, who we pray to or not, who we, you know, how we view the world. If we could just let go of all the things that governments and institutions have put into place to say we should hate that person when we realize that if we're on the wrong side of love, we're doing it wrong. That's been on my mind the last couple of weeks because I see so much hate. So much hate in the name of my beliefs are right and yours are wrong and I'm going to make your life a battlefield because of it. And man, we're doing something wrong. So I'm going to work really hard to put myself on the right side of love. So until I see y'all again, y'all be good to each other and take care of each other and Peace out, y'all. Bye.